At the start of the 1980s, 58% of grocery shopping was spent on fresh ingredients to make home-cooked meals, with only 26% on processed food. But by the end of the 1980s, as you can see on the graph on the screen, there was a drastic rise. Within that, there was a massive rise in weird, wild and largely unsustainable food facts, which mainly came from government influence from things like the American Senate Committee Report, which was released in 1977 telling Americans that they needed to cut the fat, salt and cholesterol in their diet right now or else. It also came from food tech and societal pressure to be thin. These diets varied from the cabbage diet to lean cuisine to the grapefruit diet or even the Elizabeth Taylor diet. The list is endless and quite frankly sad. Aside from food, some memorable moments in the 1980s to try and set the tone for this video are that Olivia Newton-John's Physical was the decade's most popular song, the original Game Boy had only five games available and the average home price in 1985 in England was under £19,200. So now I've painted the scene for you, we can get into the 1980s zone, but please bear in mind I've done every year from the 1940s to now and this was the hardest year to summarise as a whole because there is such change from the beginning to the end. For seven decades, the Office for National Statistics has been using a thing called Basket of Goods and Services. This helps measure the rising, falling and costs of products and services over time. In 1987, the basket saw the inclusion of muesli for the first time, and this was said to replace oats for a lot of people's breakfasts. So, for our first lunch, we're kind of eating very similarly to what I ate as a kid. The change from the 1940s to the 1950s was a lot, and then 50s to 60s, and then 60s to 70s. And then I feel like from the late kind of 80s to even to like the 2010, I feel like not that much changed. I might be eating my words when I come to film a video. A ham and cheese sandwich is very classic to what I would have had as a kid. Um, so I'm gonna enjoy this. Thank you to the viewers who sent in their 1980s meal plans. It was so helpful. And you can kind of see on screen what the general gist was. I am so excited for our crisps today. If you're not from England and you've never had a Monster Munch, you're missing out. Although they are the stankiest crisps that you can have. Like they really do have quite a smell and a flavour. Um, I don't know what flavour. You've got flaming Hot, you've got Roast Beef and you've got Pickled Onion. Pickled Onion is my favourite but I'm actually kind of in a roast beef mood today. The problem is Monster Munch have shrunk so much. Also apparently that's quite controversy around Monster Munch because first of all they used to be massive but second of all people say that they apparently that is what it looks like it's supposed to have really long arms but I always thought it was a monster it was like a claw do you see that like a paw I asked you guys on Instagram what you ate throughout the 1980s and a lot of people said that on Mondays it was using up whatever you'd had from the roast the night before so we had a homemade chicken soup from our chicken roast the day before I have my delicious dinner which is kind of like so far it's been quite similar to just a normal day. Um, but this is very different. I would never have this. I used to have that as a child. And then you have the custard. It needs custard with it. I don't like custard. It needs, look at that big bowl of custard on the cover. Well, I'm going to try it out. Move your it's bottom. in like a little thing like that. All right, shove it in the microwave. Oh, that's so This reminds would be. Me of my child. Does it? Remind yeah, you of your child? My mum used to make it herself. This oh, smells like jammy. This is the jam roly poly. It smells. Kind of weird. It smells a little bit plasticky. I don't. I feel like this is wrong. And you just spoon a dollop on. I've never had Eat this it in before. One. It needs custard. Lashings on it. It's a bit hot at the moment. Ooh, hot. Mm, not bad, but not good. I actually quite no, like it. This morning. It is day two of the 1980s. And weirdly enough, last time I filmed my 1970s, it snowed. And we've had another snow. So maybe I should just film these videos because it literally never snows in England like this. Yeah, every time I film these videos, the snow comes down. And you know what's perfect for a day like today? A bowl of ready breck, which so many people said they started their morning with a big bowl of oatmeal or ready breck and they would have lashings of sugar on top. Now it's time for the magic. Sprinkle that thick layer of sugar on. Love it when it goes all caramelized on top. It is lunchtime and I have something that I have never tried before. A lot of people said that in their sandwiches they either had a paste or sandwich spread. 
and I've never tried sandwich spread before. It kind of looks a little bit freaky if you ask me. So this is the sandwich spread. I essentially think it's basically mayonnaise with a little chopped up vegetables in. So I'm gonna have that with cheese in a sandwich. And I'm kind of like, I want something different today. I want a little bit of variation and I'm only on day two. I love choosing wild and wonderful lunches for myself. It says it's bursting with flavor. So let's see. This is such an interesting thing. Also, I did this on TikTok once where I basically like peeled my cheese because then you get nice thin strips of it and everyone was mind blown and had never seen it before. But this is just something my granddad does and I always just thought it was something that everyone does but alas no, because sometimes it's so hard to peel cheese but this is the best way to do it. Gone for the icon that is half and half bread. A classic. Let's give this sandwich a go and see what the sandwich bread is saying. It looks so sad. That is not bad. It kind of just tastes like a blended up coleslaw. I mean, I'm a mayo lover. I like salad cream. I like all of those things that really divide people. So I feel like it has the same sort of energy. And today's crisps. Actually, I just thought, I've opened them up and I didn't check if these were around in the 1980s. But these are by KP Snacks. And KP Snacks really ruled the roost when it came to crisps. I'm actually going to do a crisp sandwich. This is the best thing. Gosh, I'm salivating. I'm actually quite enjoying myself. This is quite a good little sandwich. You've got the crunch from the crisp, you've got the soft bread, and then you've got the acidity from the like sandwich bread. Are you ready for this ASMR? But I feel like there's no substance to it. I feel like, considering they didn't snack, how's this gonna keep me fueled for the rest of the day? This feels like a snack in itself. It is time to prep for dinner and dessert tonight. And I'm gonna be having an old fave, Angel Delight. Now this was the only flavor that Tesco had, the butterscotch flavor, whereas my favorite flavor is the banana one. But when I tell you I haven't had Angel Delight in honestly, I was about to say hundreds of years. That wouldn't have been very honest to me because I'm not 100 in a lot of years. Um, since I was a kid, which like, since I was probably like six or seven, we used to have this all the time. And we would put sprinkles and hundreds of thousands in and me and my siblings would race to see who could get the most sprinkles in their mouth at once. Anyway, I'm gonna make this. I don't even remember how to make it. Okay, so I have put the milk in, and we've got the Angel Delight powder in, and the smell is bringing me right back. Let's get it whisted. I think that's it. So I'm gonna leave that to set in the fridge. It's only made two. We must have had the tiniest little portions. It is mid-afternoon and lots of people have very varying responses on the snack etiquette. But the one thing everyone agrees on in England, this looks really weird, is tea time. A biscuit at around three o'clock. It's around three o'clock. I'm hungry and I need a snack. And most people said they'd get home and have a tea and a hot drink to keep them going until they had dinner in the evening. So it is time to prep dinner. We're going for a shepherd's pie tonight um apparently that was a classic 1980s comfort food situation so i'm gonna prep it now so a 1980s shepherd's pie you'd think it wouldn't be that different but i'm following a recipe and it's quite simple like i'm about i was about to put mustard in my mash i love mustard mash or like a little little sprinkle of parmesan but no it's simple it's quite plain and classic um, and there's not loads of herbs and spices in it. You know what I mean? It's just like a classic, a classic recipe. Well, you're gonna have my mustard out ready to go. And I wanna chuck it in, but I want this to be the proper 1980s recipe. It's having to take all my restraint to not put a little bit of cheese on top of that. Shepherd's pie time. And here we have it. Shepherd's pie and some peas. Yep with some Bisto gravy, a classic. Here is the butterscotch Angel Delight with some sprinkles on. Is this what it looks, is this right? It should be light and fluffy, Brad. I don't know how I feel about Angel Delight. <laughs> it's like, is it trying to be jelly? Is it trying to be yogurt? It shouldn't be jelly-like at all. I don't think I've whipped it enough. 
There are definitely better desserts out there. Why did I love this as a kid? I accidentally deleted some of the footage from day three, but it was basically the, exactly the same as day one. Um, but today we went for some freezer food because we needed something quick and chicken Kiev's really ruled the roost during these years and some potato waffles. I'll put some of the quotes on screen. It's really interesting to see how much the freezer food took over. It is so chilly. I am actually gonna have hot milk with my wheat fix because it's so cold. Quite something quite nice about having a hot weed weed I don't know if you've ever had it before. Do you remember there was that advert that were like, how did you have your weed fix? And some people were suggesting all sorts of wild and wonderful things. I think my dad used to have it a really weird way. How, um, also I can't fit more than three in a bowl, but four I feel like is the perfect weed fix number. You can't have, you can't be having two weed fix. It doesn't even touch the sides. And then you've got to do your little sprinkling of sugar on top so that it goes all nice oh this is again this is such a throwback to childhood weed picks oh yeah comforting i'm gonna go for something that everyone said they used to have all the time which is pizza on like a french stick or a baguette or whatever you call it you know at home where you just put like the pizza paste and then cheese on top here we go see what i mean a little pizza french stick thing um it's quite nice to have something a bit different from a sandwich also something warm that is really good. Actually quite funny because in the 80s, there were a lot of different genres of food, which I kind of feel like there is now. Like you obviously had nouveau cuisine, then there was the rise of lots of different veggie things. And then there was more easy processed frozen food. And then there was just like good home comforting meals. And it feels like everyone was kind of on a different journey. Quite similar to now. You've got vegans, you've got paleo, you've got gluten free so many different things i'm going to be prepping dinner now and this recipe is one that was sent by so many people and it's 1980s chicken casserole and obviously we're learning that there was sort of a move towards easy quick recipes not necessarily the most nutritious um but recipes that would could just be done very easily so I'm going to make this chicken casserole and what's great is it's almost essentially a one pot recipe because it's a casserole, you just chuck everything in a pot, leave it in the oven um, and bada boom bada boom, you've got yourself a chicken casserole for the whole family. The chicken casserole situation is in the oven. I'm intrigued how it's going to taste because it really doesn't have much in it. Like there are not really any herbs or seasoning. Here is the chicken stew and you're supposed to have it with buttered bread. So analysis of the chicken stew so far from the clientele is that's good. It's just a bit. It could do with a pastry crust. Yeah, basically it tastes <laughs> like the inside of a chicken pie and there's no pastry. I think there is some so, potato in there. Yeah, there are bits of potato. Mm. Very homey. It's very homey. It's good, it's nutritious, uh, it's I, warming. Well, that was, it was good. It was a bit underwhelming, <laughs> not the most flavoursome thing ever. It wasn't but bad. we have two options for dessert. <laughs> two options. Classic. I do remember that. Jerry's. We used to have this all the time when we were oh, kids. And this was a bit of a classic as well. Do, 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 do. That was a special treat. Vianetta. That's special treat. Special treat time. So, got you two choices. Viennettas are so pretty. I feel like they're a work of art. You always used to fight over the cherries. I know, there's only like two in there. That's... Why did we want that? Because it was red. <laughs> <laughs> different. In a sea Quite of... A I got a like cherry! Yeah. In a different time. Hey everyone, it's the last day today. So we are gonna have some fun cereal um, because I feel like we need to give it a chance. Problem is, these don't touch the sides of me. So I might have to have two because I'm just gonna be so hungry after it. So I'm gonna go for cornflakes first and then I think we'll do Rice Krispies after. Like, that's a mouthful. There's something quite nice about cornflakes. Something quite sweet. I kind of love it. Yeah, I was right. Did not touch the sides. 
I'm gonna go for the rice krispies today. Oh, for lunchtime I had another cheese and sandwich spread. But I thought I would say, because we're about to have our Friday evening, I've actually done a whole video where I did a 1980s dinner party. Because 1918 dinner parties were really special. They had some wonderful recipes and I love looking through old 1980s recipes because there's just things that I would never have even thought of or dreamt of. Anyway, we weren't having a dinner party because if you want to see that, there obviously is a whole video which I will link down below, but we are gonna have something different. Right, everyone, it's Friday night and I'm about to do something I haven't done in years. We're about to go and get a fish and chip takeaway because that was the general consensus from most people was that fish and chip Friday was, <laughs> was the thing. So we're gonna go. It's not my takeaway. That would be the lowest... It would be at the bottom of the tier of takeaways for me. Right down, right down here. So, we've got to do it though. It's got to be done. So let's go and get some, I'm going to get everything. Curry sauce, tomato peas. It's a bit sour, like joking. Never had a salmon and I don't want one. Here we have our fish and chips. Curry sauce, of course, and mushy peas. Unboxing time, look at these chips. They're salt and vinegar and looking good. Here is the full array, oh yeah. You got mushy peas? Mm -hmm. I can understand why, after a week of intense work in the 1980s, in and they've the cooked. Yeah. Can you imagine they've cooked dinner every night, lunch, breakfast, go, go, go. Sit down, relinquish all cleaning responsibilities. Mm. Yeah. All cooking. All in all, the things that I noticed from the 1980s was that there was a real rise in frozen ready meals. Obviously we saw that with the chicken Kievs, but I feel like it wasn't quite as much as the 90s and there were still a few homemade meals and apparently from talking to my mum there was a real divide like lots of people were either team frozen ready meals and other people were still making sure that they made all of their home cooked meals so it seems to be very much like today where there is a lot of division amongst the food around what people think you should and shouldn't eat it's also nice to see that there was a lot of development of new things arising and i can imagine how nice it must have been for people to just have something quick and easy when they've been out at work all day long. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really enjoy making them and they're so much fun. And I get to learn so much. If you would like to see any other videos through history, I feel like we can't really do a 1990s because it's so similar to today. But if you do want that, or maybe you want me to go further back in time, then do let me know. I love you all loads. Have a great day.